Everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. Finally, 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 we're getting into editing, uh, showing you guys how to edit your movie. Uh, we're going to get into the basics of editing here. We're going to get into what's called an assembly edit. An assembly edit is just getting basically getting the shots that you want, just the kind of the clips that you want down inside your timeline. Your clip by clip by clip, your edit by edit by edit, your cut by cut by cut. So you have a, a movie that's telling a basic story, uh, and then in later in the next episode, we'll start getting into fine tuning that and. Um, fine-tuning that within the timeline. But right now, we're going to be doing the first cut, which is basically a rough cut, or an, what they call an assembly edit. Uh, so right now, I've import, I have footage organized and imported. We've got two scenes for this short film that, that we're editing here. By the way, I am sharing uh, the footage for this, so if you want to download it, uh, I've got a link in the description. You can download a zip file. It's about three gigabytes, and then you can uh, do your, and then you can practice editing yourself with this footage. One thing that with this footage here, we shot this as a silent film. There's no speaking during the this, this film at all. There's like a scream and that's basically it. Uh, so we shot this without sound. Uh, they, they call that MOS in the in the industry. It meant, means uh, minus optical sound. And uh, this is just shooting. We just have the visuals here. We are going to do a sound mix in this later on. We'll show you how as we get into sound mixing, we'll show you how to do sound mixing. But right now we're just getting into, once again, basic assembly editing. So I've got my footage in, so imported here. We're going to work on the scene one. I'm going to go up to our uh, workspace arrangement here and I'm going to go under assembly. This is the first I usually do my basic editing under assembly editing. You can do it under the regular editing uh, layout if you want to, but I like this because it gives you a larger viewer for your footage and puts your timeline and has your timeline down here. So it shares. Uh, let's look at the the editing layout here. The editing layout has this is important to know your project window. I'm going to hold down. Shift 1 will jump to your project window. So if I'm in another window here, Shift 1 goes to my project window. Shift 2 jumps to my source window. Source window is the window used for viewing clips. Shift 3 jumps to your timeline. Shift 4 jumps to your program window. Now, actually, let's let's do this. I'm going to get rid of my editing window right here, my editing timeline here. Let's show you how to create a timeline. I showed that in an earlier episode, but right now, let's just show, show it all the way from the beginning here. I'm going to go up, and we're going to range under assembly. Now, assembly shares the... The, the source monitor and the program monitor in the same window here. So if we do Shift 1, it jumps to the program. Shift 2 jumps to the source, which is a clip viewer. Shift 3 jumps to your timeline. Shift 4 jumps to your program window. Now that's out of the way, let's start editing here. Uh, I am going to open up my scene number one uh, folder here. I like my, I, I keep emphasizing my project panel. I like it personally under list view. I pretty much keep it always under list view unless I'm organizing media. And right now that I'm organized, I don't need to do that. I'm going to go up to my scene one window here and I'm going to double click on that folder. It will open it up in a new tab. By the way, if this is under list view here, uh, no, so we've got a project window, we've got a bin window here, and the bin window is also under list view. I like to have my bin or my folder uh, tabs under icon view. So I'm going to click icon view, it shows a thumbnail, and I also go down, and this is all prepped for getting ready to edit. I'm going to, I'm going to go under sort icons, I'm going to make sure this is under list view sort. List view sort will read your project panel and read whatever uh, arrangement you have here. So I'm going to arrange this by name. And now this will arrange my scene one folder by name because it's reading my list view sort default and it's actually arranging by that same arrangement. So now this is an alpha numerical order rather than the user order. So now it's going to be easy to scroll through my shots and find them. You do have a little slider down here to get your footage, uh, your thumbnails either larger or smaller. I like it about that, that large right there. And if you really are looking for something, you can move your mouse over this window and hit tilde and the tilde key above the tab key to the left of the number one key. And it makes that window go full screen. And now you can look through the footage that you want. And once you find a clip that you want, you can select it. You can either use your arrow keys like this. I'm using my arrows left and right, up and down to choose a window. Let's say I want to choose uh, this shot right here. You can double click on that with your mouse or you can use a shortcut Shift O. Shift O will open that clip into the source panel and now you can view it. Right now it's uh, somewhere in the middle here. I was scrolling around earlier. So I can just hit home. My home key will jump to the beginning of that and I can press play by hitting space bar and it will play through the clip and I'm going to go through some shortcuts here to kind of navigate through these clips here like JKL we'll get into. Um, but now I can grab my playhead and skim through the clip and find the footage, the clip that I want, the portion of the clip that I want. So shift one to jump back to my project window, move my mouse over this and hit tilde, uh, brings it up in full screen. Now the one thing I need to do to start is I need to create a 
uh, timeline here. I don't have a timeline yet. So what I'm going to do is grab one of these clips. I want to make sure that, the, and I had an earlier episode on this, but I'm going to go up to this little three-layered um, drop-down menu here, this little drop-down menu, and I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to say Preview Area. Preview Area is going to show what my clip attributes are right up here. So I'm going to select one of these and look at the, the resolution is 2048 by 1080 and 24 frames per second. So I'm going to grab one of these here and I'm going to drag it down and drop it into the, it says drop me to here to create a sequence. So I'm going to create a sequence and this is what I want my timeline resolution and frame rate to be. So I'm going to grab my clip and all of these clips are actually the same. As I move through it, you can see that these are all the same 24 frames per second, 24, so they're, and they're all the same resolution. So I'm going to just grab one of these, drag and drop it down into my timeline and it just generated a timeline here. This time timeline is named the same name as the clip that I used to drag it down in. And you can see these little icons here. That is a sequence icon right there. And this is footage right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this clip out of there. I don't want it in there. I just created the timeline. So now I can delete that clip and I've got an empty timeline ready to edit. All right, but this is also in my scene one folder. And I don't like timelines in my folders uh, where I have footage. So I'm going to go back to my project panel. This is an easy way to get it out of there. And it's in that scene one folder. Same folder is right here. I'm going to drop that down. There's my timeline icon right there. I'm going to grab this and drag it to the left and hover over. And, and notice it has a little no symbol on that hand right there. See, this makes a fist to show that you're grabbing it and moving it. And it has that little no symbol, which means where I'm trying to drop it right now, it won't let me, it won't do anything. So I'm going to drag it far to the left right there. That little no symbol disappears and I let go and it just dropped it out of that folder. I can collapse this folder now and there is my timeline right there. I want to rename this, so I'm going to hit uh, hit the return key on a Mac or the big enter key on a PC, and I'm going to type in a new name. It's, it's blue right there, it's highlighted, so now I can just start typing, and I'm just going to call this assembly edit. You can call this whatever you want, I'm just calling it assembly edit for right now, and I might have a, like a rough cut, and then a, a, a working cut, and a final cut later on. So, so this timeline is going to be called assembly edit. And notice it changed the name down here, and now I'm pretty much ready to start editing. So to start editing, right now I'm working out of my timeline, but I want to work out of my scene one folder. So what I can do is hit shift one, it jumps to my project window. As I keep hitting, as I keep hitting shift one, it'll jump through all my uh, tabs. It won't jump through these other tabs down here. These ones you actually have to click on, but it will jump through my uh, footage tabs, which are my project window, which is kind of nice. So you don't have to hit shift one and jump through all these tabs to get back to your project window. See if we have scene two window open, now I've got two, let's rearrange these, so I've got scene one and scene two right there. Let's go to icon view right there, and I'm going to arrange this one also by list view sort, and now I have scene two ready to go. Maybe make these thumbnails a little bit larger. And now when I hit shift one, shift one, shift one, shift one, shift one, shift one, it toggles through all these pro the project window and these scene folders that I have open. So I can kind of quickly use that shortcut to start jumping through these folders. I'm going to hit shift one, one, or shift hit shift one twice and it jumps back to my scene one bin. I can arrow down and it will start selecting clips here. And then when I find the clip that I want, shift O and we're ready to start editing here. Uh, let's, let's quickly describe how the how scenes are shot in a, in a movie. Each one of these here, what we have are scene numbers. At the very beginning, these have been renamed to uh, represent uh, these slate numbers here. Let's open up a slate here and show you what's on these slate numbers here. So usually the very first frame that you see on a clip, uh, especially if you had an assistant editor cleaning up the fo footage for you, is going to be the slate. The very first frame you see is the slate numbering the shot. That's very standard in film production, in, in narrative film production. Right here, I've got a number, I've got a scene number and a take number. These are the most, these are the two most important numbers to an editor right here. Uh, the scene number is, is basically what's called a setup. And to show what these numbers mean and how things are shot, we're first of all going to jump to the script, the, to the screenplay for this film and show how, uh, how shot coverage is treated. So here I've got a page of the script. This is actually scene one. So this is the entirety of scene one right here. And then you can see down here that scene two starts, which, which is a, uh, kind of a shift in time. Now this is something that a director of photography will do with, usually together with the director when they're planning uh, footage coverage for a scene. The first one that's usually planned is what's called a master shot. The master shot is a shot where the camera rolls at the beginning of the scene and it rolls the entire scene till the end of the scene. That's very typical of a master shot. So what the director of photography will do is they will plan a master shot. And they're going to draw a line going all the way. This is called lining a script. They're going to draw a line showing how much of that scene this is going to cover. So they will draw a little stop point here and then start drawing a line that goes all the way through the through the scene and then a line at the end to show that that's where it stops. So this is going to be called a master. Just scribble that down. 
So they'll label that as the master, and this is what they're planning to shoot. So one camera will run the entire shot. Then they will plan other shots. They might may start planning like a and and this and these shots are usually wider angled shots. It shows like the entire scene, uh, and it, it shows the entire scene and it plays out throughout for the entire scene. Then they might start planning like medium shots and close ups. They might say from here down to here, to, uh, we're going to plan a medium shot, and then the camera will dolly in toward the subject. So medium shot dolly. And then aside from the master shot, you can see that we're missing a whole bunch of stuff down here. So they might plan a couple other shots that overlap a little bit to make sure that they get coverage from here to here is going to be the close-up. And then from here to here, we'll go back out to a medium shot. Then we're going to do over the shoulder to the monster that walks into the room here. There's a, a little horror short, so we'll say from right here until the monster walks up to the bed. This is going to be the over the shoulder from the bed view. Now that you got the main coverage, you've got a master shot that covers the entire scene, and then you've got some medium shot close-ups over the shoulders that, that cover the scene. Then they might start going through and planning out what they call what they call inserts. Inserts are like close-ups of items and objects in the room that oftentimes people are looking at or, ref or referencing. So like right here where Bella turns around, uh, rolls over in her bed, and reads the clock, says 12 uh, 12.07. The clock actually switches from 12.06 to 12.07, so right here is going to be an insert of the clock. So we're going to call that insert. And they might put some other information, uh, pencil and other information on there. But there we've got, and, and then if we have a couple other, we do have a couple other inserts, but, but hopefully you get the idea. So this is how it's planned out. And now when it gets, when this scene gets shot, the director of photography is going to decide which one they want to start shooting the scene with. And in this instance, they, they shot the master shot very first. So whatever shot is being shot first, when the camera rolls, there's going to be a slate that shows the shot number. And here's a slate right here, got a little visual slate. So when the camera rolls, the first thing that's going to be shown on camera is what that uh, scene number is, what that setup number is. It's typically called a setup or, or a scene. Uh, it's basically, or, or a lot of people call these shots. But the, the little confusing part is that a setup can be this master shot right here. But a master shot can have, but this master can have several different shots within the several different shots within this setup. So I'm gonna call this, from the time they hit record till the time they hit stop, that's gonna be called a setup. Because within a, a specific, within a setup, especially master, there can have, you can have several different shots that you're going to edit to. Uh, it might start out wide, then it dollies into like a medium shot, and then maybe the camera pans over to reveal something else. So this can have diff several different shots in that single setup. So when you're editing this, you can start out on the master, then you cut to the medium shot, and as you play down, you might cut to the insert over here, and then you cut to the close-up, and then you cut to the OTS, and then cut back to the close-up. So every time you cut, it can be, it can be a different shot that you're cutting to uh, based off of all these setups. So these setups here, oftentimes people do call them shots, uh, but th these setups here will be numbered. So that first one, that master shot from beginning to end, the very, it's, if it's the very first shot they're seeing, that they're shooting. This is scene number one, so that very first setup is going to be called scene one. And that becomes the shot name is just scene one. That is the name of the shot right there. They call it they call it scene one. And then the takes is how many times it takes to get it right. So you start recording, you let the camera roll, and somebody screws up and the director yells cut, they stop recording and they go back back to the very beginning and start shooting it again. Once they do that, the next take is going to be this is the same setup, so they're going to call this take two. And let's say they screw up again, and then they'll do take three, and maybe they get it right on take three. So moving on to the next setup. Say they got the master shot done, and that's good, and that and that's all done. So let's cross out the master shot there. And let's say they want to do this medium shot dolly shot right there. So the next shot is still going to be named after the scene number. This is scene number one we're shooting, and that, but you're going to add the, add the letter A. I'll say alpha because that's what they usually say on set. So that when they're running the slate, they'll say one alpha take one is the next uh, setup. And that setup is going to be called a uh, one alpha. So, so this shot became numbered as number one. This next shot is becoming numbered as one A. Let's say we move on to the close up, and it's the very next shot in line. So we're going to call this one B. And you keep numbering each setup, one B, one C, one D. You don't na name them in pre-production. You name them as they're being shot on set. Take one, we screw it up, take two, and so on. So 1B has two takes. Uh, the first master shot had three takes. And actually, when we actually shot it, it actually had six takes, and, and you'll see that. But this is how the numbering goes until you get finished. And then once you finish the entire scene, let's say you start shooting scene two. So scene two has its master shot. That continues onto another page, so I don't really have it right 
right here. But let's say you start shooting the master shot. You, you finish scene one and you start shooting the master shot for scene two. So the master shot, the very first shot that you shoot is going to be numbered scene two. Then once again, take one, take two, take three, take four till you get it right. And then if you move on to a close up or medium shot, the next shot you shoot is going to be scene two A, take one and so on. So now the editor can distinguish between the scene number, between the scenes based on the names of the clips here. And you can see that as we go into Premiere here, we have scene one, take one, which is the very first setup and happens to be the master shot. And then take two, take three, take four, take five, and take six. It took six takes to get the master shot right. And then we move on down here. We've got 1A pickup. I'll talk about pickups later. But we move on to the next shot, which is scene 1A, take one, take two. And then they got it right on take two. 1B, take one, take two, take three. And then they got it right on take three. Scene 1C, and so on. 1D, one, and so on. Now, what a pickup is here, scene 1A, take one, uh, they shot the whole scene from beginning to end. By take two, they had a bunch of really good shots in there, and the director said, you know what, That we, we got almost everything we needed out here. I just need to go in the middle of this scene and pick up one little reaction shot. So that's what a pickup is, is let's go back to Photoshop here. Uh, let's say you're seeing, shooting this over the shoulder here, and everything was really good in it, but there's one little part, right, let's say from right here to here, that didn't work out, that the director says, I just need to get that one little part that we can edit to. So rather than shoot the whole thing over again, the director says, let's shoot this little portion from here to here, and that little section right there of the same angle, the same shot, uh, becomes a pickup. So that has the same numbering system. The editor knows that it has the same numbering system. So it is 1A, but it has a PU in it, which is pickup, take one and take two. So that's just a little segment out of the scene one alpha right here that they decided to shoot and go in just a little short section that they decided to shoot in there. And then if we go to scene number two, you'll notice everything starts with the number two, because this is the scene number two here. Scene two, take one. Scene two, take two. Then the next setup is scene two A, take one, and, and then take through two, take three. Scene two B, take one, and scene, uh, they got that right on the first time, and scene two C, take one, which they also got right on the first time. All right, and with all that explanation, all that setup, we are finally ready to start editing so basically an understanding of how to organize media, how to rename media, and how a film is shot is pretty much required when it comes to editing. If you don't know all that stuff, you're going to be having a really hard time keeping things organized and editing. So with that being said, let's move on to the assembly edit now.